everyone, welcome to my channel, Everyday I'm Mothering. This week we have another great week of delicious plant-based meals for your family. But before we jump into the recipes, I did just wanna note, we started taking B12 this past week. Now when you move to a vegan, vegetarian, plant-based diet, it's important to get B12. Typically you do get that from meat. Now it's not because it's in animals. I mean, it's injected or they're supposed to get it from their plants and when they eat. And technically we should get it from, I guess like the dirt or the vegetables, but you know, we clean that off and whatever. So you do need B12, it's important. Um, so we ended up getting this. Let me see if it'll focus in there for you. And it is a B12 spray and I'll link it down below too but we've been taking about four uh, pumps of this on your tongue and we've been giving like two to the girls um, every day. And it's just an important thing that you do wanna add if you haven't already. And I've been really happy with this um, brand and the spray. As always, I wanna include our shopping trips as well for the things that we're planning for the week. I typically will do our meal planning on the weekend and then do a big order to pick up on Monday. And this is from Walmart and then a few things from Kroger that we aren't able to get at Walmart. Monday we had a caramelized shiitake mushroom risotto and it was so tasty. Risotto is something that we used to cook quite a bit but we haven't actually done it in years and I can't remember why, but we used to do a mascarpone mushroom risotto and it was so cheesy and good. So when I saw this one, I was really hoping to recreate, you know, that dish. And I have to say it was pretty successful. The cheese in this dish actually came from a vegan Parmesan cheese that you make. And I actually make it in another recipe later this week too and use two different um, methods for making it, but they both turned out pretty similar. So it's pretty basic. Use cashews, nutritional yeast, you know, salt, pepper, garlic, whatever you want to throw in there for a little bit of seasoning. And you just grind it up really fine. And it actually makes this melty, cheesy Parmesan. So when we stirred it into the risotto, it became so creamy and so rich. If you've never made risotto before, it is one of those dishes that you need to stir continuously while cooking. So it isn't something you can make and just walk away. So just keep that in mind, especially when we're cooking with little ones. I know sometimes it can be a little hard to do that, but you do need to be aware that you need to stir it so it doesn't get mushy and overcooked. And that's gonna be about like 15 or so minutes that you need to be able to stand there and be at the stove to get that cooked. But other than that, it's a really easy dish to put together. There's just nothing like a good, creamy, warm, heavy risotto, especially like on a cold, dreary day. We just love that. So we were really happy with this dish. Everyone ate all of it and there were no leftovers. So it was a really good dish for our family. On Tuesday, we made a cheesy lentil bolognese casserole. And I had really high hopes for this. You know, I was really wanting an idea of some kind of casserole that I could have pre-made. We could stick it in the oven on nights that we have activities or whatnot. And I have to say that this one, the kids loved it. I mean, they ate it all, but I just wasn't necessarily a huge fan. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't great. And when we've had so many great recipes these past few weeks, this isn't one that I will probably recreate again. But like I said, the kids liked it. So if you do need some type of cheesy pasta casserole that you can make in advance, this may be something that you wanna try out if you're looking for something that your kids will also eat. It was fairly easy to make. I've never really cooked with lentils before, but you know, they give you that boost of protein. And in all in all, I mean, it was a hearty, nice dish. It just wasn't my favorite out of all the ones we've had this week. And I think part of that is the cheese sauce that came with this one. So they call it this all-purpose vegan cheese sauce. And it's made from cashews, but it also has carrots and potatoes. So this one does take a little prep work in the beginning. Like I said, it's nice. You can put it in the fridge or for later, but it does take a little bit of work, you know, getting the sauce put together. But to me, the sauce just wasn't the best for a pasta. I much prefer the cheese pasta from our macaroni and cheese last week. Much prefer that as a cheese sauce for a pasta. This one they said it could also use on nachos. And to me, it did have more of that, like if you've ever been to like the ball game, like those type of like nacho thick yellow cheese sauce. It was more like that. And Actually, I thought so much that it was like that that we used it, that cheese sauce later in the week for nacho. On Wednesday, we made a vegan Pollock paneer with curry tofu and homemade naan. So I was really excited to try the naan. I've had a lot of difficulty finding vegan naan. I found it once at Costco, but after that, they all have some type of milk in them. 
So I figured why not just make it? And I found this recipe that was pretty easy. It only had to sit for about 30 minutes. I ended up letting it sit for closer to an hour just because I had the time and it did rise more. So I think the more you can let it sit, the better. But it was so easy to make that I don't really ever see me probably buying naan again. It was really easy, it was fine, just throw it on the grill. It only takes like a minute or two, it puffs up nicely. When we did add some garlic to ours this time, you don't have to do that, or you could even make it like a buttery naan. But anyway, I was really surprised and really impressed with how easily you can make naan and how tasty it can be. Curry itself, I've never made this dish the traditional way, and so I'm not really trying to recreate something in a vegan way. I didn't really have anything to compare it to but we all really enjoyed it. I will say it probably doesn't necessarily look that appetizing in the pictures, but it was really good. And that little coconut milk drizzled into it. Uh, the tofu was really nice and soft in it. And we served it, of course, with some rice. So we enjoyed it. It wasn't probably the best curry that we've had so far. It wasn't a really, really strong flavor to me. So again, I don't know that I'll recreate this one for us, but if this is a dish you've liked in the past and you're looking for a veganized recipe for it, then I would definitely give this a try. And I would just say, you know, bump up the spices some on this one. The last two recipes I've talked about, you know, I said weren't necessarily some of our favorites, but this one on Thursday is one of our top favorites. Like it's one of those dishes that even thinking about it right now, I'm craving it. Like I, I want to have this again tonight. That's how good it was. And if you watched our nighttime routine video, which I'll link here if you haven't seen it, a sneak peek of this meal, cause I was actually making it that night. The balsamic portobello burgers with caramelized onions and garlic aioli. Oh my goodness. These were delicious. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You have portobello mushrooms, onions, you make this garlic aioli sauce, you know, you can do lettuce, tomato, whatever on your burger, burger, portobello burger. It was delicious. My four-year-old Adeline doesn't like mushrooms, so usually when we cook them in these dishes, I have to disguise hers in some way, like either blend them up really well or like pull them out. She actually ate this and we didn't say it was a mushroom. We were just like, oh, it's portobello. You know, you'll try it, you'll like it. She ate it. She had no idea it was mushroom. And that's how good it was. It marinated in this like sauce they were really, really nice. Now, of course, they don't taste like a burger, like we did the Beyond Burgers in the past. Those were more like an actual burger. So this is different, but it was so good and so tasty. They were thick, juicy, really flavorful. That aioli was amazing. And we love garlic. So we put extra garlic like in all the steps. We even had it in the side for that day. And we made crispy baked garlic matchstick fries. And for some reason, I've never really made fries at home. We're not big fry people, like even out when we go out, we don't usually eat fast food, but when we do, we just don't really typically get fries. I don't know, maybe that's weird, whatever. But you know, we decided to try them at home, this recipe, and I was surprised at how easy they were to make and how good they were. We really enjoyed them. Like having that garlic, the oil, the warmth of it all, just like melted into these fries, they were really good. I think they would even be better with maybe a little bit of truffle oil in the future but really nice side. This whole meal just felt like decadent and like rich. And you really felt like you were having like this really bad unhealthy meal, but like out at a nice restaurant, if that makes sense. But it was actually like not an unhealthy meal. I mean, yeah, there were oil and potatoes, but whatever. It was, it was tasty and we really enjoyed it and we will definitely be having it again. On Friday night, I decided I wanted to make a soup. I thought it'd be something quick. Again, you know, on Friday nights, we're running with activities. So we have to have a quick, easy meal. And we haven't made a soup yet. And I saw this one and I thought it really looked warm and yummy and I just really wanted to try it. Creamy curried cauliflower lentil soup. And again, I've not really made soup with cauliflower or lentils in the past, but it looked like this really delicious color and I just thought this would be really good to try. Well, ours did not quite come out the same color. I'm not sure how they got the color in the picture, but ours was definitely more of a green color. Uh, it was pretty easy to make. It was really quick. This is a recipe you can use an immersion blender or put it into a blender. Now I've used my immersion blender for a lot of things in the past. I'm pretty happy with it and the texture it gives me. Not this time. I can tell you, don't mess with the immersion blender. Just use a regular blender. I did the immersion blender at first. I served it. I took a bite and I thought, I'm not gonna be able to eat this. Like, it's what I imagine chunky baby food tasting like. No. And like, even, and I could tell even the girls took a couple bites and they were trying to soldier through it, but it was not that good. 
So I went ahead and just took mine, took everybody's to the blender and blended up their bowl and put it back in. And then it was really good. Adeline ate two bowls, Elena had held her bowl and then came back from her class and wanted another bowl. Craig and I enjoyed it with, and we just heated up a big crusty loaf of bread to go with it. And it was a really good, nice soup. It was very flavorful, much better once it was completely blended up and that smooth, nice texture. So I think it'll probably be one that we, you know, might make again. It wasn't necessarily like my all time favorite of a soup. So I'll probably still try around, you know, some other recipes. It had a lot of good stuff in it. The girls really enjoyed it. It was nice and quick and easy. So I could definitely see me making a batch of this up and having it for lunches throughout the week for them. As you all know from my other videos, we do intermittent fasting during the week. So that's why we don't really talk much about breakfast and lunches during the week. The girls typically have like leftovers or simple little breakfasts and lunches I put together for them. And I may do a video about that specifically in the future if you're curious about some ideas for that. But on the weekend, we do try to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner unless we're just full. And you also know we do one savory and one sweet breakfast typically. So on Saturday, we did our sweet breakfast and we did vegan pancakes and sausage. Now, you know in our week one, I believe it was here, that we did vegan pancakes as well, but I wanted to try a different recipe out. Now, the girls really liked this recipe. They said they liked it better than the first week. I actually liked the first week's better and Craig did too. So, I mean, it just... So, I mean, that just goes to show you, it really depends on what kind of pancakes you like. These had more of a dense, chewier texture, whereas the ones in the first week were more fluffy and airy. So I preferred that, but you know, the girls preferred this. Either way, they were all gone, so the girls still really enjoyed them. And these were a little bit easier to make, but my recommendation, depending on what kind of pancake you like, you know, maybe try one, try on both and just see which one that you prefer. As for the sausage, some in the freezer from our first week. So we just had the Gardein sausage again. You know, I'm not like a huge fan of it, but we already had it, so we ate it. But I'm still on the hunt. And some people have given me some really good notes for some sausage to try. So I will be doing that at some point. For lunch on Saturday, I was super excited. And our video from two weeks ago, I believe, I had asked, you know, I challenged everybody to put their favorite recipe down below and that I was gonna pick one and that you guys should go through and pick one to try. It was while I was shooting that week's video. So this is the week that I was actually able to try one of those recipes. And someone had suggested vegan sushi. And I hadn't even thought about making vegan sushi. And we love sushi. That is one of the things that I was the most nervous about having to give up. Craig and I, I mean, we can literally sit down and eat so much sushi, so much sashimi, we love it. So the idea of doing this at home, making it vegan was really exciting and I thought it'd be really fun. We actually had the bamboo mats and because I had thought we were gonna make sushi at some point and we just never did. It just seemed intimidating. But I was like, this is it, we're gonna try it. You gave me this idea and I'm gonna do it. It was a pretty easy recipe. You know, you just have your cucumber, your carrot, avocado, you make your rice and we just, of course, use our Instapot. We always make all of our rice in the Instapot. It's just really easy and really simple to do. And then you had your seaweed wraps. For our tofu, we just sliced it up and fried it for a little bit on the stove with a little bit of oil. Really simple again. I didn't want it to be too crunchy because I wanted it to still kind of taste like, you know, the fish does in sushi. So that was okay with me that it was a little soft. So depending on what you like, you may want to cook it differently for this. But then you do bamboo mat, rolled it up, and it was actually really easy to do. It was fun. Craig and I were doing it together and competing about who could make the best rolls, which, you know, clearly I did. We made, you know, quite a few. We used a whole pack and then we just sliced them with some soy sauce. And then we also made a side of the yum yum sauce. Now this is similar. We've made this in the past. We would make like chicken hibachi at home, that white sauce. It was a very similar recipe to that, but it's you know, that orange kind of sauce that you'll see kind of squirted over the top sometimes of the sushi rolls. And it was really easy to make and it was really good. So we'll keep a batch of that, you know, in the refrigerator. It's nice to just have like on rice bowls or like I said, hibachi type chicken dish, obviously with tofu. Really good with those two sauces on the side. Our family ate all of the rolls. We really probably could have eaten more of them. They were just so delicious. You know, we liked using the chopsticks. We liked having that experience in the meal. It was really fun and it really hit a craving for me. That was something I was afraid I was gonna have to give up. So that was a really successful dish for us. Thank you so much for suggesting it. We were really happy with how that turned out and we will definitely be doing sushi nights again in the future. I'd like to add like some edamame in with it and maybe like some neat little salads and do that, like a bigger meal with it. But we were really happy just having our little sushi lunch that day. Sunday night for dinner was again, one of our top meals of the week. 
we decided to make pizza. We haven't had it since we started this journey and pizza was something we probably had at least once every other week, if not sometimes more. But you know, that cheese and all that just never really set well with us. We always felt like bloated and gross after we ate it the next day. And it just wasn't that pleasant, but we love pizza. So I really wanted to try to find a recipe that we can make that we could enjoy. And I've made pizza before at home with crusts and different options. And I've liked them, they've been okay, but I haven't been just blown away by any until this one. The crust was really easy to make. I actually just doubled the recipe because we needed two pizzas for all of us. Really easy. Um, as far as vegetables, we kind of just used what we had on hand, but you know, you can never go wrong with caramelizing some red onions to put on there, mushrooms, garlic. We did some red peppers, some regular plain pizza sauce uh, from Walmart, I think. We put on there, nothing big and bad. You know, lots of seasonings in the crust. Actually something we did add was from another recipe. When I was looking for pizzas, I'd come across a few and I was more a fan of this one because the crust just seemed easier and more practical for us. But this one component on this other pizza dish really had me intrigued and it was the whipped almond ricotta. And it looks like, you know, if you've ever gotten one of those, one of those white pizzas or margarita type pizzas where they have the big chunks of like mozzarella on it, it kind of looked like that. And we really enjoy that kind of pizza. So I wanted to make this and just see if it really tasted, you know, like that kind of cheese texture. And it was really easy to make. When I first saw it, I thought, hmm, I don't know how this is gonna, this is gonna work. But we you know we did it, we scooped it onto the pizza. And when it baked and it came out, the pizza all looked really good. That ricotta looked interesting. It was like brown and speckled and kind of like hard on top. And I thought, well, if it's, if it's really bad, we'll just scrape that part off and eat around it. And then I took a bite. And I am kidding you not, it tasted like that mozzarella ricotta, like dollops on your pizza. And it was amazing. Like it was so tasty and so good. And Craig actually said that he would have liked it to have been all over the pizza instead of doing like the dollops to actually have done like an entire layer of it on the pizza because he enjoyed it so much. And I could actually see it really being good like that as well. So I might do that and maybe do some spots that got dollops. I don't know, but we'll definitely be making it again. And we put just a little bit of that shredded uh, veggie cheese, Go Veggie, I think's the brand, on top. Not a lot, it didn't need a lot, but just a little bit. And after we pulled the pizza out of the oven, we added some basil leaves and sun-dried tomatoes to it. And that just put it over the top. I love fresh basil on a pizza. I don't like to bake it in the oven because it like kind of turns black and burns, but just putting a little bit over the top of it just perfect. And we served it just with some, we like Franks on ours, so we put a little bit of Franks. And then our family loves to have popcorn with pizza. I don't know if that's something that you guys do or not, but we like that little bit of crunch. So we just use our air popper thing of popcorn. We put some uh, nutritional yeast on it for a little bit of like that buttery flavor. And it's just a perfect side for us. And we all really enjoyed that. And getting to sit down, have this pizzas again. It tasted like you know, pizza that you're used to. I didn't even notice that it was dairy-free pizza and all the good veggies and all of that. I did not miss any meat on it. It was just a really delicious. On Sunday, we did our savory breakfast and it was, it was a sun-dried tomato, mushroom, spinach, tofu quiche. And we love quiche in our family. It's something that I will typically make like on the weekend and that will be our, or the girl, and that will be the girl's breakfast throughout the week. So we were really looking for a way to recreate this, obviously without egg. All this dish and I thought this looked really, really good. You know, the crust seemed really easy to make. The tofu was just blended up into this like thin sauce mixture that kind of looked like eggs that you just put in over all of your veggies and the crust. So it was pretty simple to put together, but with all quiche, you know, they do take a little bit of time to cook the crust, cook the quiche. It needs to set for a little bit before you try to cut it. If you try to cut a warm quiche, you're gonna have a mess. So it's one of those ones you need to know if you're making it the day of that you're gonna be eating a later breakfast, but you could also, you know, like we typically do is make it in advance. But this morning we did make it day of, it was fine for us to eat a little bit later, but it was such a good quiche. We ate the entire thing. We really probably could have had two because the curls would have loved to have a little bit more. We ended up just adding like some fruit and other stuff just to beef their breakfast up a little bit more for them. But the tofu really did taste like you know, quiche, like an egg mixture. And you didn't really miss that it didn't have any cheese in there. It was absolutely delicious. It just felt like you were getting all these healthy, good vegetables and this really nice, warm, flavorful quiche in this breakfast dish. Overall, I was very happy. I was very impressed with it. And we will be making that one again. So if you like quiche, or even if you don't think you like quiche, 
you just like your vegetables or savory breakfast, I would definitely recommend eating this one and trying it out. The rest of the day on Sunday, you know, was Super Bowl Sunday. So we just kind of scrapped the whole lunch dinner thing and decided we were gonna do a huge spread of game day snacks, appetizers, dips, desserts, nachos, and we've had like sweet potato brownie, nachos, mini carrot dogs in a blanket, gorgonzola Brussels sprout ball, buffalo cauliflower wings, dips, lots of stuff, but actually did a whole separate video on it because there's a cover in it. So you can see that video here and I'll also link it in the description bar down below so you can get more details on all of those, but they were really good. They'd be perfect for any kind of game day or party or anytime you just want to make like some little appetizers and those carrots in a blanket sound bizarre but they were really good and there's somebody just try to keep in the fridge sometimes because they're an easy snack to just to grab and heat up for the kids too throughout the week also for snack this week we did try the simple truth chocolate chip cookies and i had shown that cookie dough in one of our past videos in one of the little shopping hauls and we had said we wanted to try it out so we baked them up one night and they were really good. We did a chocolate chip cookie recipe in one of our past videos that we really enjoyed. These cookies were more what you would think of like a traditional chocolate chip cookie, you know, a little bit thinner, a little bit crispier, very sweet. We want to recreate that type of chocolate chip cookie. These would be really good at that. That was a little too sweet for me and they go really quickly. So I don't know that we'll probably get these a lot. And I will have to say for some reason, on two different nights that the next morning, everyone's stomach just kind of felt weird i'm um, just a little bloated a little uncomfortable and that's the only thing that we had in common you know were those cookies now i can't say for sure that's what caused it i don't know but it seemed odd and i don't know if that was related or not so maybe it's something in the ingredients you know maybe we'll try them again at some point just to have something quick and easy here when you do like have that craving for something and see if we find that again you like that kind of chocolate chips and like that cookie dough from you, know, you can get out of the refrigerator and just go ahead and easily put it in the oven then i think you'll probably enjoy those and it's worth trying out I'm so excited already about the meals we've been having this week. And so, of course, you can catch that next week. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. And also click that bell next to it so you'll be notified about next week's video for some plant-based meals. So keep a lookout. I'm going to be posting some videos that have been requested about more details on how I meal plan and shop for the week. Also, a comparison about how much it costs to actually eat plant-based and vegan. I know that's a concern for some people. So we're going to break it down exactly how much it costs doing this versus how we were eating in the past. And is it affordable? Then also an update on what it's been like after a month of plant-based eating and our weight loss results, which have been awesome. Bye everyone.